Hi, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining this uh, webinar. Uh, it is a privilege and honor for me to host uh, this webinar named The Insurance Industry's Response to New Normal through Artificial Intelligence and Digital First Model. Uh, we have today a uh, huge, uh, you know, uh, great stalwarts from the industry uh, to share their experience with us. Before that, let me introduce myself also. Uh, my name is Rajat Subrapal. I own TCS uh, Banks for Insurance, which is uh, the insurance arm of under TCS Financial Solution. Uh, I, what we have tried for you know few months during the pandemic situations that uh, we we started a new way of working that is you know working from our home working from our uh, new uh, locations on, out of our normal office locations so this pandemic has created a different you know type of work culture different one of expectations from our end consumers as well as the end consumers of insurance companies so we thought while the industry is uh, of course you know uh, comparatively recovering so how insurance industry will react to this recovery and you know the uh, new growth and the new way of delivering the services to our end customers through uh, the strategy, which uh, which will be uh, our observation is that very much technology led, and of course the backbone of that technology will be uh, uh, next generation technology like artificial intelligence and digital fast you know, model. Um, I I will uh, introduce today with us three uh, uh, huge you know tier uh, one companies. Uh, 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 insurance stalwarts that will you know participate uh, in this panel discussions first i'll introduce mr vinoy jha um, vinoy is chief innovations and digital uh, officer of mng plc uk we have done a huge transformation we have been doing in fact you know the transformation is in progress with vinoy where we have been transforming a huge legacy uh, technology into TCS banks. Uh, of course, uh, it will give the leverage to react to this, you know, uh, new uh, pandemic, you know, situations because it is a platform which completely uh, digitally uh, enabled. We have with us today uh, Johnson EDS, Mr. Johnson. Uh, uh, we are working with him uh, in Old Mutual South Africa. Uh, we have taken up a huge transformation with Old Mutual again uh, uh, to address the mass uh, market of insurance. There is a digital transformation is happening, and uh, Johnson you know, has been working with us for last you know four years in this uh, transformation journey. And the last, not the least, Indonil Bandavadai, with whom. Uh, in Indonil is sorry, Indonil is uh, uh, chief technology officer of NetBank Insurance, and Indonil is working with us for a transformation where life insurance as well as the PNC insurance uh, uh, or the general insurance together he is providing the technology, and Indonil is helping us in this huge transformation into banks. So welcome. Uh, to all these three panelists, along with Kiran Sisadri, who is our UK head of financial solutions of TCS. So I would like to hand over to Kiran to take this panel discussions forward. So uh, thank you, 
everyone uh, and a good day for uh, joining us for this uh, uh, industry uh, webinar series. Uh, today we are covering the insurance industry and uh, their response to the new normal, uh, the intelligent and digital first model. Right? Uh, I have with me a set of esteemed panelists from the top firms within the industry. Vinay Kumar Jha, who is the Chief Innovation and Digital Officer at MNG PLC. Johnson Edesaw, who is the Chief Information Officer at Old Mutual Limited. And Indranil Bandyopadhyay, Head of Information Technology at Zedback Insurance. Welcome to all of you. And thanks a lot for uh, joining us for today's session. So I'll get started with uh, the questions, uh, you know, because the audience is uh, quite keen to understand your perspectives uh, on how you are dealing with uh, the current situation. So let me start off with uh, Vinay. Vinay, uh, you know, given the pandemic over the last uh, six, eight months, where we have seen remote working and automated business processes has become a necessity. What is the new normal within your organization? How are you dealing with technology and innovation to help embrace the changes which are required? Thanks, Kiran, for the question. And thank you, Rajat, for introducing. Uh, let me introduce you, uh, MNG, first. So MNG got its first birthday on 21st of October this year. Uh, we are the newest of the oldest kid in FTSE. Uh, we were part of Prudential PLC earlier. Uh, now we are MNG PLC. Uh, I think the question is really uh, relevant. Uh, the new normal is pretty simple. I think for everyone else, for us as well, the priority is pretty simple. The priority is to be safe. To be safe, looking after uh, your family, your customers, and the business. And that's exactly precisely what we are doing. Uh, we have been fantastic in continuing to deliver for our customers during these times. And at the heart of this, uh, is really caring for each other and for the customers. To do so, uh, we have to enable 6,000 plus people working remotely in a very short span of time. Uh, th there are collaboration tools that needs to be in place so that people can actually uh, talk to each other, they can see each other. Uh, we have become a lot more human now through those collaboration tools. You are having uh, your team meeting, you are having important reviews and your kids drop by. And there's no harm in saying hello. Uh, so so we, have, we have become a lot more human. Uh, and then if you see, it's all about really getting into digital, right? And when I say digital, I mean really here, uh, kind of self gratification for the customers. So we have to open those channels where customers and advisors who are supporting these customers can serve themselves rather going through someone in a call center or sending a letter so that somebody in the back office can process it. Uh, and we have to accelerate those really, really fast. But then when you do it, uh, there are cyber security, cyber ills, which also come in play. We also seeing a lot more uh, uh, where scammers are trying to exploit the situation, the fear of COVID-19, pushing the customers into taking uh, like decisions that they will not take. And this means that we have to be a lot more conscious about those behaviors, meaning we have to give the information in a very precise, easy to understand and digestible manner and through all the channels, right? So the consistency is also quite important. Uh, Innovation plays right, another big role there because the way we have to adapt to those changes and remember it's about uh, we are an international business. So in order to keep safe, uh, you have to work according to the local guidelines, meaning somewhere you are doing shifts, somewhere we are uh, just reduced hours uh, and keep serving the customers in the way we have to. Uh, this means that we have to be uh, adapting to those situations faster. Technology can help. So I give you a simple example where we opened up. So if you really need, if the customers have a claim pending with us, 
they will be able to just take a photo of the required documents and upload. And that's available. Uh, that means that when you're opening yourself to those digital channels, you have to have the tool sets behind the scene, which really identifies if there is a fraudulent behavior somewhere. Like somebody uh, logged into your website, let's say somewhere in Midlands in the UK, and within 30 minutes, you're seeing the same customer trying to log in from somewhere in Thailand. You know that something is wrong there. So while you have to keep serving the customers, uh, we also have to make sure that those behaviors are spotted and then change the flow in which the claim has to happen so that it's still safe. Because that's other priority, which we have to make sure that your members, the customers savings are safe and growing. Uh, the, the, the quick point to note there is the way we are working now and the way we have been uh, moving towards embracing the digital technology and innovation are only going to intensify and going to continue because we see the positives in it. Uh, so that really will become the new normal. Thanks, Carol. Thanks a lot. Uh... Vinay, and, and uh, congratulations on the first birthday, as you uh, suggested, uh, and then very rightly said. Uh, so over to you, uh, Johnson, uh, uh, what's your view on the adoption of digital technology, digital channels and solutions by advisors in the pandemic uh, era? How are you empowering your sales channels with technology to cope with the new normal? Good day, everyone. Uh, real pleasure to be here. Thank you for uh, having me. Um, 20 seconds on Old Mutual, first and foremost. Old Mutual is a Pan-African savings investment and banking uh, company. We've existed for 175 years. We celebrated that in May. So we like to think um, we've lived through a couple of pandemics before and a few wars. So admittedly, COVID-19 is unprecedented in all our lifetimes. Uh, we have 14 million customers and we've got 33,000 people who work with us. As we approached uh, the lockdown, uh, one of the key things clearly was we had to rapidly accelerate the digitalization of our advisor force. Uh, the advice process is core to Road Mutual because our philosophy is we want to help customers achieve their lifetime financial goals. So advice is a critical element for us. Um, in a few weeks, we enabled every single one of our advisors, they're close to 9,000 of them in South Africa alone, with uh, collaboration tools. We, um, timing is always uh, an interesting fortune. We were in the process of deploying our new retail protection proposition, which is built on banks to all of our advisors. And um, actually, as I speak to you today, many of our advisors interact with customers using collaboration tools like uh, Teams with banks behind um, the front end and they can sit and share screens and, and walk it through. So we've actually found the adoption uh, remarkable. Uh, as Vinay says, there's been a huge acceleration, obviously an uptake of, of tools and technology. And um, also just in closing, the other thing I would say we've noticed to, to agree with what Vinay said is we've all become more human in this. So actually uh, we've become more caring, even in what might seem like a virtual space. So in short, to answer the question, I mean, it's been a massive acceleration with our advisor force. Um, at Old Mutual, because of our partnership with TCS, we were right at the point we were deploying in South Africa and Namibia this retail protection proposition. And that fully digital online capability combined with uh, collaboration tools has really helped us enter a new normal. Thank you, Johnson. And uh, very rightly said, uh, collaboration is a key uh, during all times, but especially during the uh, challenging times. Uh, let me move on to Indranil. Uh, Indranil, uh, welcome. Uh, you know, my question to you is: uh, as uh, NetBank offers both uh, general and life insurance and then all the financial services uh, to that extent, uh, we know that these have their own characteristics. How do you see uh, the LOBs impacted by the pandemic? And which one do you think is recovering and adapting faster to the new normal? 
Thanks, Kiran, um, for inviting me and the opportunity to speak on very relevant topics. I think it's a very interesting question you posed to me. A few words on NetBank. I think we are one of the bigger banks of South Africa. And under NetBank Group, um, we have NetBank Insurance, as you rightly pointed out, um, have general insurance and life insurance and investment under our portfolio. So just to position that the organization I belong to. So yeah, um, you have two parts of your question. Let's just deal with the first one, um, the impact of COVID on our life and general insurance. Um, let's just start with life insurance, which seems to be more um, sort of uh, impacted by COVID or one would think that it will be get in, impacted by COVID. Um, uh, we have seen in South Africa, the recovery rate compared to rest of the world as quite high. So from that perspective, our life um, oriented claims so far as death claims are concerned, um, we have not seen a remarkable increase, though there's a marginal increase in those kind of claims. But what is important as the whole world has, you know, um, has woken up to this pandemic um, is um, the socioeconomic impact which that has got um, on each and every country. And South Africa is not unique. Um, from that perspective, from our claims in life side of the business, we are picking up a lot of loss of income. That's what it started with. And then of late, we are seeing some of the retrenchment claims coming through. Um, though it has sort of normalized a little bit, and that is quite intuitive because the impact has had in the past much more when um, we were under severe lockdown and as countries start opening up, you know, some of those trends would normalize. But in the main, to summarize, um, our loss of income and retrenchment claims are where we are seeing significant impact. Coming to the uh, general insurance side of the business, as you know that uh, both Vinay and Johnson you know, alluded to, uh, working from home, different sort of, uh, you know, work practices. People are, uh, some people where possible are working from home under some of uh, COVID regulations, we needed to be at home. So that means that the impact on our general insurance. So what do I mean by that is, um, let's just call your car. If you are mainly at home, then obviously you're not driving your car. That means the probability of collision related you know, claims then goes down. Um, if you are mainly staying at home, that means the content related or all risk related risks um, you know, starts coming down. So how do we actually react to these kind of things in the his historical way of looking at it is that everything was bundled together and you pay a premium. So in essence, Though it's counterintuitive, we are seeing that on the general side of the business, uh, the movements and the impacts are sort of more uh, pronounced than let's just call it on the life side of the business. Then let's just come to the second part of your question, which is around that which line of the business have been adapting in a uh, faster way. Um, as you know, let's just deal with the life side of the business to start with. As you know, life. Uh, insurance is a long-term contract, okay? So um, by definition of that, when you have an existing book, it is very difficult to react to that because those contracts were already written. Now, what you can do is react to your future business. And that's where um, COVID, a pandemic, what does it mean? How do we underwrite? What will be the premiums? Do we have a light, you know, sort of life insurance available? These are quite complex sort of um, uh, things to deal with. And, um, and how even COVID will, you know, sort of pan itself out um, in coming few years, we don't know. So there is a bit of a complexity in terms of reacting in the life side of the business. But as I explained to you on the general side of the business, it is a short term. In South Africa, we call it the short term insurance because of the term nature is very short. You know, at best it's a monthly policy. That means that the reaction to anything which is happening around us, um, the short term business or the general business are much more nimble. For example, if you are not driving, um, there is a need for, let's just call it usage-based insurance, right? So you use 
whatever you use, you pay uh, for collision related benefits. Let's just call it that that's what reduces. Then what does it mean to our premium and how much of that we can pass it on to our clients? How do we react to that? Um, then what comes to my mind is around, let's just call it um, micro event based, that the event is now is micro event it is for a short period of time probably that's the need of the hour so those are some of those um, sort of impacts so in um, summary i'd like to say that maybe quite counterintuitively the general insurance have been impacted and is reacting to that much better than they just call it the life insurance end of the business that's what we are at least seeing in our books of business thank you no, thank you, Adrenal. That's uh, that's really uh, very insightful, and and uh, you know, it's it's uh, uh, a pandemic like this. It's it's not just about health. It's also about the social, financial. You know, you rightly mentioned that it's the loss of income, which is a huge challenge. And uh, uh, while the healthcare people focus on, but there are uh, severe implications uh, of something like this. Uh, but yeah, thank you for your insights. Indranil, I'll uh, probably have a follow-on uh, question to you on that. You know, given you have highlighted the differences between uh, how general insurance and life insurance has been impacted and which has been reacting faster. Uh, how, in your organization, uh, when you are transforming, uh, you are leveraging new product offerings, digital, and innovation, uh, given the new normal? You know, how are you actually coming up with uh, uh, new solutions? For your end customer. Thank you, Kiran. I think to start with, um, I like the word solution as opposed to product because um, I sincerely believe the days of product push is over. We need to be in our client's life and we need to ensure that this, we give solutions you know, to their needs. So very interestingly, I think uh, what COVID has done or the last eight months have done is that some of the trends which we, we were well aware of, uh, probably uh, this pandemic has shown that it can be done or in some places it has even increased the speed of adoption. So for example, let's just call it digital. Uh, we always knew that digital is the way forward you know, from different angles, but um, think about it in COVID where there were restrictions, social distancing, you know, some of very physical related transactions, which even we thought in the past, we were forced to do in a, in a digital way, right? So um, this, this pandemic has, in my mind, has increased some of those speed of adoption. And we are obviously um, not uh, separate to that trend. And, uh, and pretty much we knew that uh, this is going to come, but obviously nobody could have thought there'll be a pandemic which will increase that speed. So to that end, we knew that um, like most uh, insurance companies, um, legacy systems were a challenge. And backed by TCS banks, um, let's call it in three, four years back, we completed our transformation program and we actually run both our general and life business you know on one system which is quite unique i'm told in the world and that has that uh, having a modern back-end system uh, have somehow positioned us better to react to this pandemic so what i mean by that you can have digital you can have a whole lot of other um, user experience in the front end but if your backend systems and solutions are not geared up to that, uh, then I think it, it, it's not that it can't be done, but it becomes even more you know, difficult. So that's why we are lucky that we already started the journey 10 years back and three to four years back, we have completed that journey. And then subsequent to that, we already started looking at our digital uh, roadmap. And as we all know, digital just doesn't mean that your presence on a mobile app or a laptop or something like that. It is the end-to-end -end value chain in terms of that. And underlying this, there is a need for speed. Everybody wants things to be done immediately, right? So if we bring all those trends together as an organization, like I said, backed by our
our back end modern system. We started our digital journey a couple of years back and um, we are pretty deep into that journey. Not only some of the tangibles of uh, making our presence felt on various digital uh, channels NetBank has, especially I would like to sort of, um, apart from the, you know, our money app and, and our digital presence, we also have a platform called Avo, which is quite interesting. It is a lifestyle oriented platform. And we sincerely believe that um, the days of a standalone financial institution could be numbered. We need to be in, in the lifestyle of our, um, of our clients and a financial transaction, including insurance becomes a sidebar story. It enables, you know, in order to, you know, um, get to the need or find a solution for our clients. So all those channels, be it the platforms or our conventional channel, making our presence felt. On top of that, we have started APIification very much into the journey of, uh, let's just call it open insurance. So our API is in our API marketplace so that we can interact with our fintech partners. But all this actually in the end, Kieran, what we are trying to do is that seamless, frictionless user experience, uh, the need for speed, as I mentioned, the straight through processing of any transaction, what our clients want. And in the back of all those things, there is a robust backend system. There is data based information, um, you know, insights, uh, machine learning. Uh, we are looking into various machine first, uh, zero touch kind of principles. So all those things are actually coming together. In a nutshell, Kiran, uh, uh, we find ourselves in a great position that we are in a great position to take advantage of that and at the end of the day give our clients a very seamless and frictionless experience thank you Kieran. no fantastic it's it's absolutely amazing and Ranil, to to hear that and and coming from a technology uh, person you know to to see how you look at the lifestyle of a client and then accordingly build your solutions so uh, that that's really insightful for uh, for me personally and and uh, the audience so uh, johnson uh, moving over to you uh, you talked about collaboration uh, uh, initially when you spoke uh, uh, you know how is your organization uh, uh, looking at uh, cloud in the new normal era and and what benefits do you think it will bring or problems it will solve because with cloud uh, also comes uh, you know as some people say uh, certain security challenges though it could be a, a perception but uh, would be great to hear your uh, thoughts on that uh, thank you uh, thank you Kieran um, I jest but I'm very serious I say to people that uh, one of the advantages of COVID-19 is the debate about cloud adoption is over uh, because the simple truth is most of what we have all done to enable our uh, organizations to serve our customers would not have been possible without the cloud and as we look forward to the future certainly one of the beliefs we have at old mutual is that the way people choose to work for old mutual has changed forever so um, we need to realize that we're in a world where people work from anywhere uh, for old mutual and that's a great thing so at old mutual pre the pandemic we already had a 100 percent cloud strategy uh, so as far back as a year ago, we declared that we were moving our entire solutions to the cloud. And to answer your question as benefits, we laid out four reasons for doing it. And they were all fundamentally around driving improved customer and advisor experience, but in no particular order. We want the scalability of the cloud. As a business like Old Mutual, we want the ability to deploy solutions in Zimbabwe one day and into Kenya the next. We can only do that with cloud. We uh, want on the availability of cloud, uh, on the workloads, we've already moved to cloud. We've had 100% availability. Um, probably more importantly, we've automated things like security controls. So the point you made on security, uh, we've now got a degree of in our security environment that was not possible for these workloads. So I would argue, actually, uh, workloads in the cloud with the proper controls, you can make as secure at a lower cost than you could do 
on uh, on uh, on premise. So service uh, security uh, very very important uh, scalability, and then obviously the last one, which all of us have spoken about, is speed. Uh, the speed to deliver customer outcomes in ways that would be impossible otherwise. And here I remind people, cloud is an enabler because as Indriel has said, in order to leverage the speed, you need things like uh, APIs, you need mature DevOps processes, you need to adopt agile, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, fundamentally, those are the four reasons why at Old Mutual we've got a 100% cloud strategy. By um, this time next year, for our South African businesses, we'll shut our data centers. We will not have our own data centers for speed, security, scalability, and service. Thanks a lot, Johnson, and, and wish you the very best in your journey. I'm sure uh, you know uh, you will do well, and this time next year, everything would have moved to the cloud. And then uh, for the audience, you know, remember the three S's. Uh, uh, you know, I think that's a great way to uh, remember the benefits of uh, cloud. Moving over to uh, Vinay, uh, you know, uh, from the lessons and experience that we have gained over the uh, six to eight months. Uh, how are you working towards an intelligent business model? And by intelligent, uh, you know, uh, what I mean is there's so much technology available today. You know, there is AI, there is ML, there is cloud, there is uh, uh, ecosystems that you can bring to play. Which of these uh, you are actually focusing on and, and how do you think you can uh, help translate benefits to your end customers by becoming more uh, intelligent? Uh, uh, Unit. Thanks, Kiran. I love the intelligent word here. Uh, I think uh, Johnson summarized it very well. Tech is enabler. So all of those things that you said, cloud, be it AI, be it ML, uh, these are, a lot of times these are buzzwords, but in true sense, these are really enablers. And we don't focus on those, right? The, the focus is pretty simple. How do you protect and grow uh, your customer savings uh, who has interested in you? Right? And, and so that really is the focus all the time. Uh, to do that, uh, as you said, right, I think speed is important because we really need to, it's, it's no more acceptable to respond to a customer's query in two weeks' time because people want it immediately. Uh, how do you really get it done? Of course, like Andrew Neil has explained a lot of those tools and techniques, and so is Johnson. Uh, you open it up, right? you open your channels to the customers. Another thing I think is important, which is I'm just really uh, taking one of Andrew Neil's point. Uh, when we see digital, there are many ways you can really embed it. But what's important is just think what's useful to you and in the environment you are really operating. And I give you an example. You can open up uh, portals to your advisors and to your customers. But remember, large advisors are managing customers. Uh, and we are just one of, one of the part of it. So for the customers, if you really want to enable the customer, you take your systems and processes and data to the advisor and let advisor do the work which they're supposed to do. Whereas you have advisors, which are like smaller advisory firms, and they will need a lot more those online support, right? And hence the, the patterns are quite different, right? And when we think, we really need to think about the individual needs in these cases, right? So, so, it's, so technology wise is the same, but it's just the way you really embed them and implement them. Uh, overall, collaborations are going like collaboration tools are only going to grow. So if you see Teams is just one way, uh, right, but which is Office 365, but there are many other platforms which are coming, right? And we'll have to work out in that multi-technology, multi-vendor, multi-collaboration tool scenarios, which is required for different types of clients and customers and advisors. So that's one. Second thing, I think uh, we, as an industry, we still have, especially in life and pension, uh, to embrace the technologies like AI and ML, right? And I keep going back to the to the to this, uh, space around fraud detection, 
uh, scammer detection, uh, those behaviors. And it has been done in retail industry. It has been done in credit card industry, right? If there is a fraudulent behavior, they immediately stop the transaction, right? In our case, uh, because the transactions do take time, Right, and we have to make sure that we actually pay in the right way. Uh, what's important is we identify those behaviors in real time uh, and change the course of action right, so that the customers still get the service, get the confidence, because remember confidence is a lot more important here, right? They have to have the confidence that their money is safe with you. So you can change the course of the workflow so that they can really deal with it. Another thing which is quite important in our industry being talked a lot is vulnerable customers. Uh, so how do you really spot them? And there are various types of vulnerabilities, right? How do you spot them and then serve them in the way that makes them at ease and they feel that they're still being served in the best way, right? So, so those are the bits, right? And then the real time reconciliation for important process KPIs. So what happens is we release the payment and next day we reconcile. We need to really reconcile in real time that people who should be paid, the emittents who should be paid has been paid, right? And if it's not, then you take immediate action. So I think that's where some of the shifts you will see, right? Which is more about speed, real timeliness, safety and security and instilling the confidence in the customers. Uh, that they trust you and right? the trust has to be there right and once all of these base hygiene baselines are there then going back to where the focus is how do you protect and increase the rate of return right and that's where right again AI and, AI and ml are going to play a big role so if you see the market dynamics is changing there's a lot more massive shift in terms of sustainability and the social issues, especially right. And if you are really catering the savings for different age groups, uh, the millennials want the return, but they want the return on the right things. And I'm not saying that uh, people at my age doesn't want it, right? Of course, they, we all want that, but the shift is a lot more uh, towards sustainability. So we need to really be crafty, innovative. It's just not innovation in tech. Uh, in order to create those funds, those investment vehicles, which are a lot more focused on uh, what people call ESG, which is really climate, social and governance. Thanks a lot, uh, Vinay. That's a lot of uh, lot of useful insight. Uh, and and uh, you know, so basically, what I could uh, make out of that is courses for courses. Uh, each of the new technology that is available there is useful uh, you just need to uh, find a way to make them uh, relevant to your end customers uh, uh, last round of questions uh, you know request you to keep it to half a minute or so uh, since uh, we are uh, short on time uh, Vinay, a uh, question to you a uh, bit bit more uh, long term ish how do you see the life insurance industry transforming over the next 2 to 3 years in uk europe uh, primarily in terms of customer expectations, behaviors, advisory uh, interactions, and, and uh, importantly, regulation and compliance? I think mostly I explained in the previous question. Uh, but just to summarize, see customer behavior, customer is customer, right? Uh, they have the king. They have lifelong savings, right? And having a lot of trust in you. So we have to be there. 100 percent for them right what they won't expect is first of all they expect their money to grow so you have to have the right investment vehicles so that that can grow second they expect their money and the transactions to be safe right and third uh, they want it at pace meaning when i need my money i should have it when i want to really put the money with you right it shouldn't take longer right it's instant so that's the behavior, the instant gratification, as I say, right? That's the behavior you will be seeing. And you'll be seeing from customers and due to the customer's pressure, you will see exactly the same thing from the advisors. And we have to make sure that we enable the customers and advisors to be served when they want to be served, right? And in the way they want to be served. It's no more 95 
paper and phone industry, right? You will see it changing in the Neil said it very well, right? You'll see it all getting digital. The second thing I think is regulation is only going to be stronger because the more you get digital, uh, the more uh, there are a lot of scammers who just exploit the fear. Right? COVID-19 is one, there will be a lot more. Also, the customers will panic. Oh my God, what happens to my money? Can I not just shift everything into cash? And those things happen. So we have to be quite careful, very distinct and precise in the communication that we are having with customers so that they understand. Uh, advice, I think, is going to be like, uh, it's more relevant than ever in this kind of situation and scenario. Uh, but we have to make sure that how do you really get the advice to the customers of course there are independent advisors right there are your own advisors uh, which where everybody can get some sort of advice so it's better than no advice right and that's where a lot of work you will be seeing coming out all right and then the way of interaction today if you think digital today right you enable the channels for customers and you enable the channels for advisors, right? I think in the next two, three years, you will be seeing a lot more, again, collaboration there, where a transaction is initiated by customers, advisors play their role and back to customer. And all happening okay. within the ecosystem have been really created in that way. I think those are the things I see. And don't uh, forget the last thing, which is sustainability, climate, social issues, right? The investment channels, have to cater to them. You have to hardwire them into your investment process. Thank you. Thanks a lot uh, when I uh, do the things in the right way, you know, which is uh, ethical, you know, which uh, matters in terms of all the climate issues that we are facing. Uh, Johnson, very quickly, uh, you know, uh, uh, from your perspective, how are you working towards offering differentiated experience to your customers, stakeholders? Uh, leveraging all the technologies that you mentioned about uh, in, in, in the uh, near future. Um, thank you. And um, I'll answer this question probably unusually for a CIO by not talking about technology first and foremost. I think listening to all of us, the message comes across that it's critical we think of every customer as an individual with individual needs. And in order for us to enable that, we need to think outside in is the way we, uh, we approach it in all mutual. So you think first and foremost of the experience a customer has, and we seek to make that unique to that customer. Because our customers' financial goals are unique to themselves, their family. Then um, when you turn around, when you turn that around, then all of these tools help you achieve that. So technically, to have a differentiated customer experience, you need data, and you need to use data for good. And you need things like data warehouses, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you need to be using machine learning, robotics, et cetera, et cetera. And we're doing all of those. But the point I'd just like to leave the audience with is the most critical thing is to think of the experience of the customer to make sure every time a customer interacts with you and your organization, they leave delighted and amazed. Then technology becomes a key enabler and we've all got you know, access to that. Thanks a lot, uh, Johnson. Again, you know, I think a common theme coming out to uh, uh, personalization and treating customer as an individual. Uh, Indranil, uh, last question to you. Uh, you know, strategically, do you think product models, benefits, services, and security measures will change uh, given the pandemic that we have seen? Uh, and, and what are your thoughts on that? Thanks, Kiran. Uh, the short answer is yes. <laughs> uh, but just building on uh, what Johnson was saying that uh, the sample size of one, I think it's very important to understand the needs of our clients. Um, historically, insurance is, has been gross generalization. Whether you need benefits or not, sometimes they're you know, bundled into it. Um, COVID has uh, shown us that because of the socioeconomic and, and even health related issues, People have become very, or clients have become very um, sort of focused on bang for the buck, what they're getting, uh, what are their needs. So definitely from a solutions perspective, we need to um, move towards that. We need to 
a modular modularize the products which we have we need to make it a simple um, easily understandable which Vinay was talking about in terms of our communication those needs to be engineered within our solutions and I would like to give an example that uh, probably a retail store is the best way to explain this that uh, there are shelves on the shelves there are different goods and you pick up according to your need and you leave it with a basket um, why not in an insurance industry we can start looking like that and the basket full of goods in this example becomes your policy it can be it can be unrelated things which are in your basket right but we don't think like that we think in a hierarchical way of line of business product and process and then an instance of that become policy why don't we think other way around uh, the benefits actually come together in a basket and that's where you know it becomes a policy so we are definitely uh, looking into those kind of things and uh, last but not the least which we don't talk a lot of the time is around operational of uh, nimbleness i think we all talked about speed um, we are quite uh, you know focused in that some of our claims are done under nine seconds okay and and these are some of those things which i sort of talked about earlier on and all the techniques the fellow panelists were talking about bringing them together uh, making sure that they are not fraudulent making sure that they're the right things we are actually paying the claims for at the same time you know doing it under let's just call it 10 seconds i think that will be the future and that's what as an organization we are looking and i'm sure my fellow panelists will agree with me uh, thank you kiran fantastic claims under 10 seconds i think uh, you know uh, that's the way to go so thanks a lot uh, to all my all the panelists uh, I hope uh, the audience, uh, you know, could glean out uh, uh, very insightful uh, uh, information from here, from this panel discussion. Uh, I have certainly taken away quite a few things. The three S's, which Johnson mentioned, lifestyle of the client, you know, I think customer sample size being one, uh, how to grow your money, but grow it safely and grow it at pace. You know, a lot of information which has uh, been shared here. And, and uh, with this, I once again thank the panelists and uh, open up the floor for some questions from our audience who are joining from across the globe. Thank you. So uh, we have been receiving, uh, you know, a lot of questions from the audience, and I do uh, encourage, uh, you know, everyone to uh, keep typing in their questions, uh, share their insights. Uh, you know, it can be found at the bottom right of your uh, platform. Uh, let me take a few questions and then pose it to the panelists. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Indranil, first question to you. Uh, I think the audience found your uh insights and in, in general for across the panelists the insights shared very useful uh the question is how do you plan to encourage a culture of speed of adoption zero touch principles etc within uh netbank within your organization 
thanks, Kiran. Um, it's a very interesting question, and I know that um, we have a very short period of time, so maybe you won't be able to cover all angles. But I think the most important thing is the behavioral and cultural element. I think though we are talking about IT here and our uh, conversation is around tech, but uh, the change management, the way we all think within the organization becomes very important because that's where actually all this good work happens. So right from our solution generation, right from our operational um, needs, and how we actually go about doing our day-to-day -day business, um, this is where actually these differentiations come through. And once we as an organization understand that this is where we want to move, I think IT becoming, becomes an enabler and the tech is always there. It's a matter of what are the nails on which we are going to use the hammers. I think that's where the organizational side of things comes through. And um, I think that is the most important thing, uh, Kiran. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Indranil. Um, uh, so I'll just uh, take up another question in the interest of time. Uh, probably, Johnson, you can uh, take this given your uh, interest in uh, security. I've spoken a lot about it uh, uh, on the panel as well as uh, previously. With clients and back office operating from home and often with personal devices, what data security and access controls are you employing to protect businesses and clients' interests? Uh, very, very good question. And uh, hello, everyone, again. Um, at Old Mutual, we've had a, a cloud first strategy for quite some time. So essentially what that meant is our information security tools see no difference between me using my own device in the office or at home because our footprint is essentially already uh, cloud enabled. So it's a very, very critical question because clearly all of our organizations live on the trust that customers place in us. But the simplest answer to, to the question is because we made the decision to really invest significantly in cloud-based security tools. They work just the same on a device within our perimeter in our offices, on a device uh, at home. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Johnson. Uh, probably I'll fill the next question to uh, Vinay. Uh, Vinay, how do you use the technology to drive changes to marketing business models and selling new pol policies uh, during this, uh, you know, very uh, uh, tough period of uh, pandemic? Yeah. Uh, see, uh, our business is largely through uh, uh, this mm -hmm. advice business. Yeah, so we really don't have uh, any much direct selling to the customer. It's all through third party uh, <coughs> advisors or some of our own PFPs. Uh, so what we are doing here is is making the servicing service. So the way we servicing the advisors, we are making it better. We are making making it responsive. And we are opening the channels so that they are not really just dependent on the phone and and the letter that used to come in the servicing center, rather they can self serve themselves. Yeah, and thank you, thank you, Vinay. I'll just ask a follow on question to you, you know, uh, because it's related to customer behavior, and you had spoken about it uh, previously. Do you see any uh, changes or anticipate any changes in customer behavior? Uh, towards uh, consuming insurance products uh, given the current scenario? I, I think there is certainly we are seeing, right? So the first thing is uh, the app uh, is seeing around the servicing. Uh, the patience is diminishing. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of things to deal with at this moment uh, and you don't want to, to really spend a lot of time in, in on the phone with the insurance providers. So right, that's one thing. Another thing I see is uh, people are a lot more, if you, if you really look at some of the researches, that now a lot more investment savvy uh, and, and want to understand really how their money is working. Because mostly in the life and pension side where the retirement solutions comes in, uh, you just keep putting the money. We really rarely check once a year maybe, right? Some of them may come twice a year, but you don't really see a lot of customer interaction. 
But at this point, that's another thing we are seeing where customers are constantly uh, through the risk that they see. They, they, they want to understand what's the value of their policy, how it's really grown in the last three months. Uh, and those things, if you really don't have a self-service capability, they will then come to the service center and they will take the bandwidth of the servicing, which should actually be somewhere else. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rajat, uh, I'll ask the next question to you. And, and uh, uh, you know, obviously it has to be related to uh, technology and, and how we uh, develop products for the benefit of our customers and their end customers. So what do you think, uh, you know, uh, how speed, innovation and trust are being critical today and how it translates to, uh, let's say, your whole paradigm of software design and software development? Uh, uh, going forward. Thank you, Kiran. Uh, thanks, you know, all the panelists for sharing a very, very insightful and industry, you know, experience. See, if I summarize what Vinoy is saying, that it's not the solution to just address the end consumer, correct? It's the end consumer, then there is a middle office, then there is a enterprise, uh, you know, back office, correct? To integrate the entire ecosystem. That's what, you know, Vinoy was primarily saying. And to address that, what we feel and what we are investing on our product is there are three. You know, uh, we are we are we are developing a digital experience center to react quickly to end consumer, customers, and advisors, and then digital contact center, which is to enable the middle office, the call center, who responds to customer queries, and then the digital service center, who actually process the different services that reaches to the uh, you know, end office. So this is the solution wise we are addressing. If you see that Johnson, what was saying that what should be our deployment model of technology, correct? Deployment, see traditionally it was all on-prem deployment and all this, correct? So it's not uh, going to work uh, in these situations. So if I address to Johnson's, you know, what uh, strategy or directions he's setting up, that the solution or bank solutions, we are investing a lot to be deployed into banks in a cloud native architecture. And there will be always automated deployment very quick deployment to you know cater to different features that will be released very frequently if you go to indronil indronil is always you know very innovative in terms of how the benefits can be collected how you know and how the products will be innovated and how quickly the service can be rendered correct to address that we are investing a lot of in the delivery methodologies in agile and nimble way apart from that there is a lot of artificial intelligence we are trying to do to uh, make Indronil's dream success that 10 seconds claim, correct? That's what Indronil was saying, correct? So a lot of automation other than product feature, a lot of automated tool that we are deploying, uh, we are deploying in our delivery model. So that's you know how that I'm seeing that, that uh, we are investing in our technology and the technology will evolve in that way to respond to the entire ecosystem. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, we have a last couple of questions given uh, the paucity of time. Uh, this is a very interesting one. You know, uh, loss ratios for life and health insurers have reached unprecedented level in the pandemic. We expect premiums to become dearer. Are you considering digital and allied tech innovation to enable insurers to contain premiums during this crisis? I think this has the potential to be a key differentiation soon. Uh, I think this is a very relevant question. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll field it to the panelists. Uh, you know, any one of you can uh, take that question and answer, or, or more of you can uh, answer from your perspective. Yeah, I can. Uh, I, 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 uh, just wanted to. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, I just wanted to say that Rajat, my dream is not under ten seconds that we are already doing. My dream is that before you know how you can get paid. That's the dream which we need to work towards. Okay, just um, so uh, short answer. I try and answer shortly. I, I Johnson wants to add um, uh, short on the question you asked, Kiran. So yeah. if you really look at it uh, with an increasing loss ratio, I think business models in insurance is um, simplistic. I think we make it complex. Uh, one part is obviously our revenue where you get premium. The other part is obviously expense. So one part of it is the loss ratio, which um, you know there was a question around it. So that is going up. So what is left after that? that? What is left is that any other 
cost of running an organization, right? So uh, digitization is definitely one of way of solving that because there's no marginal cost of um, any service, be it even new business, you know, which is involved. While if it's a non-digital way, there is a cost attached to that. Um, in the panel discussion also, I mentioned a few things around how we can do straight through processing where this comment of, you know, under 10 seconds came from. So the quicker and the more machine does and a machine first principle, we bring it to the fore, uh, that cost also gets reduced because again, the marginal cost of dealing with claims becomes lesser. So in essence, I think all the things which as panelists we talked about, um, you know, Johnson is talking about cloud. Uh, what is cloud? You know, if you look at from the question point of view, what you ask, um, apart from all of the advantages, the cloud actually converts a fixed cost to a variable cost, right? So when you put on-prem, you know, your setup, you have a huge, you know, on-prem fixed cost. You don't know how much of it gets utilized, but you use it. But then going to cloud means that you convert that fixed cost to a variable cost. So all those levers, I'm sure, you know, we need to pull in order to reduce some of those costs so that we don't pass that increased loss ratio to our clients, because that, that will be not the right thing to do. Um, Johnson, you, uh, go for it. Thanks for uh, the question. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Indranil. Um, I turned this question the other way, and I asked myself, uh, why do customers take financial services and insurance? is to protect themselves, their families, now and in the future. Um, and I fundamentally think that humankind, through this pandemic, we've recalibrated our understanding of risk and, and the importance of the services we offer. So, I mean, to answer the, the very straight question about, you know, claims going up, yes, they will. We have to become more and more efficient. And I see two ways we do that. We talked about data analytics, personalization, understanding customers really intimately, uh, because that enables us to have better propositions. And note, I didn't say products, I said propositions. We need to stop thinking of, I'm selling products to customers. You know, we're enabling lifestyle choices. And then the second thing, obviously, we need to do is eliminate waste, which is where all the automation comes from, straight through processing, uh, you know, the things that we, we've talked about, cloud, et cetera. So it's a, it's a long answer to a simple question, but uh, I think it's, it's beholden upon us as professionals in this industry to always remember we're protecting people's families and livelihoods. We have to do it better tomorrow than today. And uh, technology is a key weapon in helping us do that. Thank you very much. Uh, probably the last question, and, and this will be like a rapid uh, fire uh, session uh, i'll ask all of you to comment briefly on this and i think it's a very relevant question in the current times you know while there are a lot of questions coming for the end customers uh, what is also important is how do you keep yourself and your workforce your teams uh, motivated right uh, especially when you are not able to get together as 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 one team have those meetings uh, understand the challenges uh, which they are going through personally or professionally so uh, quickly, uh, starting from Vinay and then Johnson and Indranil, uh, 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 you can take up that question. Sure, yeah, uh, lots of things, right? That's where the real innovation is coming. <laughs> uh, yeah, we are having a lot more uh, team meetings, very informal ones. Of course, they're all uh, videos on, thanks to the, the technology uh, Johnson, Indranil all explained, right? Uh, then uh, really crafty. Right. So I'll just give you an example. Uh, my whole team, the whole transformation team, uh, on Friday, they have one hour team time. So absolutely no formalities. Sometimes they just like rate like coffee, virtual coffees, those things are happening. Another thing is uh, there's no way you can really have those one-on-ones. Uh, and especially in the UK, uh, it's now going to be all darker <laughs> and wet. <laughs> Uh, it's sunlight has its own impact. Uh, so we're just asking, let's have one-on-ones. Uh, but during the daytime, go for a walk when the sun is shining. Uh, so yeah, it's just, it's, I think Johnson said very, very aptly, 
that we are a lot more human now. Uh, we understand the human needs. Uh, the lines between professional life or work life and family life is blurred in a good way. Uh, I think that's what really keeping people motivated. It's hard. And of course, like safety is the same thing. You see the policies, the way it has been changed. All of a sudden, most of the people are allowed to work from home. Uh, there are staggered shifts. So yeah, that's where the real like human resource innovations are coming. And tech is playing a big role, of course. Like if we couldn't yeah. have really Don't good see banks <laughs> of its rather itself, we couldn't have really got people to take call from home. <laughs> so there are a lot of those things. Thank you. Thank you, Vinay. Johnson, John. your thoughts? I think Vinay said it. Uh, you need structures, these sort of informal check-ins. We also do that. We regularly pull our staff just to check in on well-being. Um, if I could just say one thing that certainly I, I as a leader have noticed I need to be more careful about is protecting the boundaries between work and home. So obviously, I'm certainly at home. Most of us are at home, you know, and working. So little things like when I send emails or the Teams chat or the WhatsApp become important, that you don't set the expectation that, you know, you're expected to be online 20, 24 seven. So that I would say is just one little lesson we've certainly learned, but all of the techniques Vina has talked about, same, we, we've experimented and we've learned from. Thank you. And Indranil, how are you doing at NetBank? How are you keeping your team motivated? So it's always a trick to talk last because, you know, what more do you add? But I think uh, um, uh, I would like to answer it in two ways, um, notwithstanding what my fellow panelists talked about. I think they're very true in our lives. But the first part is that in order to keep the flock together, um, it is very important to understand that what is the goal of the organization and what why we are in the business. So it becomes a bit philosophical, but nevertheless, a very important element. Um, we are here to assist people. What is insurance? When people in trouble, um, be their life or any other, you know, prized things they had, how do we actually assist them? I think that is more and more my sort of way of looking at it and encouraging people to think and the organizations, you know, thinking is in a very similar line. And I think once that shared goal is understood, I think people will come together. I think that's what we felt. I mean, TCS is tens and thousands of miles away. Uh, they're a big stakeholder of us. They are distributed. How do you bring all of them together? Um, and, you know, some of our workforce is also distributed. So I felt that that assisted us to be together. And more tactically, what we have done is that in, in my area, we have created a group of people who are going beyond their call of duty. They call themselves adaptables, uh, pretty much, you know, um, it, it, it tells their purpose. And they are looking at various elements, you know, uh, like Vinay was talking about that, how we become physically active, you know, how many, you know, uh, sort of steps we are doing per day. And they're stepping up, you know, from that perspective. Um, you know, how we encourage ourselves to read more because now we've got possibly more time or you can debate less. Um, and how do we keep that life and work balance? So those are the, you know, it is great to see that how we have this team is, uh, you know, sort of encouraging us to adapt to this new normal. So yeah, those are some of those things, you know, which we are doing, Kiran. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks a lot once again. I think uh, some some uh, great responses uh, and then some really good questions which have come. And then there are a lot lot of other questions which have come in. But unfortunately, given the paucity of time, uh, we can't uh, field all of those to our panelists today. Uh, but we will certainly uh, take a note of them uh, uh, and and uh, get responses and then uh, try to share with uh, you all uh, uh, in in due course of time. Uh, with this, uh, you know, I would like to uh, hand it over to Rajat to give his closing remarks. Uh, but, but lastly, from my side, thanks a lot once again to all the panelists, to all the audience uh, who have joined from across the globe. Uh, these are challenging times, but remain positive, remain optimistic, and you know, uh, use this as an opportunity to uh, get better yourself and, and for your uh, family and for your colleagues and customers. Thank you very much, and Rajat, over to you. Wow.
what are uh, you know uh, great panel discussions and also a very interactive you know question and answer session uh, uh, i would like to you know uh, i'm sure that uh, where, while you know vinoy um, johnson and nindunil has shared their experience everyone has you know taken their takeouts of this you know webinar but you know, if, if i have to summarize i'll summarize this way that you know how nicely vinoy has said that it is it is of course a customer centricity but with a larger ecosystem and we all have to integrate with that ecosystem and you know technology uh, which will be again you know led by uh, different next generation technology and you know we have to uh, plug in into that ecosystem that's that's really uh, you know important to respond to this pandemic situations and uh, from johnson's i have taken out that you know uh, the cloud will be the next generation uh, deployment uh, mechanism for all uh, the tools and the uh, you know uh, technologies that will lead the business that's definitely that's what we are seeing uh, also in the industry that is adopting more adoptions will be in the cloud so i completely agree with johnson and the takeaway you know from indonil was that how to model the business also there will be a lot of uh, innovations in life insurance products uh, you know uh, like like you know like like uh, uh, bucket of benefits or uh, pay as you use type of insurance uh, that that's one business model and also which is in you know always favorite you know uh, things lot of uh, innovations of next generations which will combine both line of business life and non life together so these are these are the takeaways to respond to uh, the the new normal that you have been talking about as for my you know view goes so thank you very much again uh, for uh, vinoy johnson and indronil and what a fantastic you know moderations by uh, kiran uh, and i would like to thank you everyone who uh, you know participated in this webinar if it you know helps in any way uh it will really be uh, you know uh, very uh, uh, i'll say that you know uh, happy you know for moment for us that we could at least contribute something to the industry and you know uh, you are you know, taking away something which will be able to help in your you know strategy future strategy i would like to thank you also uh, our, uh, our digital partner who has hosted you know, today's solutions uh, uh, today's webinar uh, which is uh, oxygen entertainment and also our own financial solutions marketing team led by anjana so thank you everybody wish you a very very happy and healthy time ahead thank you mm -hmm.